Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on solving equations using solver on a Casio FX991CW. We have five example equations to solve in this video. We are going to be using the solver feature in the equation app on the calculator. From the home menu, select equation and then navigate down to solver. The first two equations that we have here are linear equations. This means that there is only one solution for x for each of these different equations. The first one we have here is a relatively simple equation. You could probably solve this through non-calculator methods, but I'm just using it as a simple example of how the solver works. We've inputted here 3x plus 19 equals 7. The equals is available by pressing shift and then the left bracket. You can see the equal sign in yellow. Once you've inputted this, press execute, and then the calculator prompts you for a value of x. Now essentially what the calculator does is tries all the different values of x until it finds the correct solution. So Essentially, what you're telling the calculator here is I want the closest solution to zero. Now, as it's a linear equation, there's only going to be one solution, so any value will be fine. So we'll just keep the default value of zero in there. So navigate down to execute and press execute or OK at this point. And you can see here that the calculator has solved the equation x equals negative four. The second example that we have here is also a linear equation, but it's slightly more complex in terms of how it's set up. Now, we don't need to do any expansion or rearranging for the calculator to solve this. We just need to input it as it's written. To clear out the old equation, you can press execute and then AC or AC and then AC again to clear out the solver. Start with the fraction button with this one. Five brackets or parentheses X minus nine plus 16 and then navigate down to the bottom of the fraction and we've got two there navigate right equals is shift and left bracket and then we want three equals three press execute again i would just recommend for the linear equations leaving your default value as zero here navigate down to execute and press ok and here we have the solution x equals seven the third example that we have here is a quadratic equation, 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. I'm going to find the solutions to this using the solver rather than the polynomial solver that I would typically recommend that you use if you have a quadratic equation in this format. It's a lot easier and a lot more straightforward just to input your coefficients for the quadratic equation and get the solutions. But you can use the solver, and I'll show you how you will do that. So input the equation first, 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. And then execute again. And just for the first solution, remember that we're looking for two solutions with a quadratic equation. I know sometimes we have repeated roots, but two solutions generally. And the first one, I would just keep the calculator as default, x equals 0. So navigate to execute and press OK. Here we have our first solution, 0.5. Now we've got to provide a different initial value for the calculator to find a second solution. And it is a little bit of guesswork, trial and improvement, which is why the polynomial solver is much better for quadratics in this format. Now, if I've got a positive solution, what I tend to do is I tend to go for a negative x value to see if we have a solution that's perhaps negative or below 0.5. So if we press execute again and then start with an initial value, well, it's quite arbitrary, the figure that you put in. So I'm going to go for negative 100. You can go much lower if you want to. Because we had coefficients that were relatively close to zero, such as two and minus five, etc., then I wouldn't necessarily need to go too low. Essentially, what we're telling the calculator to do here is to find the solution closest to negative 100. Let's press execute. Now, it's still come up with 0.5, and that's an indication that there are no solutions lower than 0.5 because they would have been closer to negative 100 than 0.5 is. So to find the second solution, we need to go above 0.5. So let's press execute again. And let's put in an x value of 100 this time, positive 100. Press execute, and here we have the second solution, x equals 2. 
So a little bit of trial and improvement there to try and find the solutions. But once we've got the two there, that's sufficient for a quadratic equation, 0 0.5 or 2 in this case. Now, where the solver may be of a slight advantage over the polynomial solver is where you have a quadratic equation that is not in essentially the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So the format that you would need to input into the polynomial solver. So we've got one here, 2x brackets, x minus 3, close brackets equals 3x plus 5. So we could expand this and rearrange to get it in the format for the polynomial solver. But in the regular solver, we can solve it in this format. Let's press execute. And let's just keep zero as our default value for the first solution. Press execute and then OK. The first solution that we have here is negative 0 0.5. We're looking for the second solution. Because this one is negative, I would suggest going for a positive value first. As we discovered in the first example, that isn't always the case, but it's slightly more likely. So we'll go with a positive starting value for x. Let's go for a thousand this time, just to show you that it is an arbitrary value. Press uh, OK on execute. And here we have the second solution that x equals five. Why is the calculator found that? Because five is closer to 1000 than negative 0.5 is. So it's found that second solution. And there we go, we solve that equation there, minus 0.5 or five. The final example that we have here is uh, a pair of simultaneous equations, except they are non-linear. One is a quadratic equation and the other is a linear equation. Now, if you have two linear simultaneous equations to solve, I would recommend using the simul equation solver in the equation app on the calculator because it's much more straightforward to use. You can go in and input how many x's and how many y's you've got. Remember, you can use x and y uh, in the place of other letters like a and b and such. But if you have a quadratic and a linear, it's not possible to use the simul equation solver with those, but you can use the regular solver. Now, the one that we have here requires just a little bit of manipulation. We have y equals x squared minus x minus 5, and we have 2x plus y equals 1. Now, what we can do with the second equation there, the linear equation, is change it slightly so that it is y equals 1 minus 2x. And then what we can do is to make both equations equal to each other. If y equals x squared minus x minus 5 and y equals 1 minus 2x, then 1 minus 2x equals x squared minus x minus 5. And that's what we've inputted into the calculator here. Let's press execute to solve. Again, I would say keep the default value of 0 for your initial execution, press OK, and then here we've got the first solution, x equals 2. Now we need to find a corresponding value for y for that, but we will do that afterwards in Calculate. And let's just find the second solution for x first. I would go for a negative initial value because we've got a positive first solution. So let's go for negative 100. Here we have the second solution, x equals negative 3. So we've got our two solutions for x, 2 and negative 3. Let's find our solutions to y. You can do this manually or non-calculate if you wish. But to do that via calculator, let's just quickly go to calculate. 1 minus 2 times 2, our first x value, gives us a y value of negative 3. And then 1 minus 2 times negative 3 gives us a y value of 7. So our final solutions to that are 2 and negative 3, negative 3 and 7 for these two equations. So there we go, five examples of how we can use solver on the FX991CW to solve various different equations. I'm looking forward to doing more videos in the future exploring how this mode can help us solve a variety of different equations. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guy.